Good morning. Let's begin our service by singing hymn number 40. Come ye disconsolate, where'er ye languish, here health and peace are found, life, truth, and love. Here bring your wounded hearts, here tell your anguish, earth has no sorrow but love can remove. Hymn number 40. The scriptural this morning will be given by Bruce from New Jersey. First John. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, 
but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and his love is perfected in us. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. We love him because he first loved us. We will now have a moment of silent prayer and then follow with the Lord's Prayer and its spiritual interpretation as given in the Christian Science textbook. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, Mother, God, all harmonious. Hallowed be thy name. Adorable One. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom is come. Thou art ever present. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Enable us to know as in heaven, so on earth, God is omnipotent, supreme. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us grace for today. Feed the famished affections. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And love is reflected in love. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And God leadeth us not into temptation, but delivereth us from sin, disease, and death. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. For God is infinite, all power, all life, truth, love, over all and all. Let's now sing hymn number 406. <clears throat> o love, our mother ever near, to thee we turn from doubt and fear. In perfect peace our thoughts abide, our hearts now in this truth confide, man is the child of God. Hymn number 406.
Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Plainfield Christian Science Church Independent. You can find us here in Plainfield, New Jersey. You can also find us on our website, plainfieldcs.com. You can find us on YouTube where we have a channel that contains over 2,000 videos. And you can also find us on Facebook, SoundCloud, and Twitter. Wherever you are, you can find us. On our website, there's a very encouraging and instructive article by Peter V. Ross entitled, Individual Responsibility, which explains very well what we can do individually to help heal the strife in this world. We begin each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. with our roundtable discussion, which is a training session in Christian science. And we had a wonderful session this morning. If you missed it, tune into our website and listen to it. On Wednesdays, we have a testimony meeting at 8.15 p.m. where you can hear testimonies of healings and lives transformed through the study and practice of Christian science. And you can listen to all of our services either on our website, on YouTube, or from your telephone through a teleconference number that we provide. And on Sunday mornings at 11 a.m., we have a Sunday school for children, and that class is also held via teleconference. So if you have a child, that would like to attend Sunday school, and you don't live in the area, well, just call us. We'll give you the number, and your child will be most welcome. And for all of our services, we have a nursery available for infants and toddlers. And let's see. I think we're still waiting for someone to step up and moderate next Saturday's Bible study session. So. If anyone feels inspired, please call Tom or Linda or Jeremy, and we would look forward to having another Bible study session next Saturday at 10 a.m. So check the website for questions. Everyone is welcome here, and that includes all of you who are listening and participating from around the world. We will now have the reading of a testimony from the chapter entitled Fruitage in Science and Health, which attests to the healing power obtained by reading the Christian Science textbook. And that reading will be given this morning by Sharon. Page 604, Spinal Trouble and Indigestion Healed. For many years, I have relied wholly upon Christian science for healing, and I am glad to acknowledge the spiritual help and many other benefits received from following its teachings. I have great cause to be grateful to God and to our revered leader, Mrs. Eddy, for these blessings, which her discovery and love for humanity made possible. I had read but a few pages in our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, when I saw that it was the truth and that it contained something I had thought could never be found in this existence. Proofs of healing came immediately and I was able to do much useful work without a sense of burden or fatigue. As time went on, I learned the nothingness of discouragement and understood in a measure that God is my life and that all action is in divine mind. I was healed of spinal trouble and nervousness and weakness faded away and were replaced by health and strength. 
A larger sense of joy and gratitude did much towards overcoming indigestion, which had caused suffering for a number of years. A sprained ankle was cured in a few hours by applying what I understood of Christian science and by holding steadfastly to the statement our leader makes on page 384 of Science and Health that God never punishes man for doing right, for honest labor, or for deeds of kindness. The following day, I walked two miles with no sense of discomfort. Beliefs of heredity and lack have been overcome, and self-will, self-love, and pride are less in evidence. Ms. G.W. Brookline, Massachusetts. The lesson sermon for this morning can be found on page 10 of the Independent Christian Science Quarterly. Subject, love. Golden text Psalms. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The responsive reading is from Psalms. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. He delivered me because he delighted in me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands hath he recompensed me. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. Fairly from Maryland, we'll read from the Bible. The Holy Bible. Psalms. I love the Lord, because he hath heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Joshua. And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua, Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. And Joshua called for all Israel and for their elders, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and said unto them, Ye have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Behold, I have divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes. From Jordan, with all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea westward. And the Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your sight, and ye shall possess their land, as the Lord your God hath promised unto you. Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that ye turn aside not therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, 
either make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. But cleave unto the Lord your God, as ye have done unto this day. Take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves, that ye love the Lord your God, Deuteronomy, these words shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Ye shall diligently keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes which he hath commanded thee. And thou shalt do that which is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest go in and possess the good land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers. First John. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Matthew. Jesus spake unto them again, then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Luke. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Psalm. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. 
For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Romans. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Florence from Georgia will now read. I will read correlative passages from our textbook, Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures, by Mary Baker Eddy. We acknowledge and adore one supreme and infinite God. Does thou love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul? and with all thy mind. This command includes much, even the surrender of all merely material sensation, affection, and worship. This is the El Dorado of Christianity. It involves the science of life and recognizes only the divine control of spirit in which soul is our master, and material sense and human will have no place. Simply asking that we may love God will never make us love Him, but the longing to be better and holier, expressed in daily watchfulness and in striving to assimilate more of the divine character, will mold and fashion us anew until we awake in His likeness. God is love. Can we ask him to be more? God is intelligence. Can we inform the infinite mind of anything he does not already comprehend? Do we expect to change perfection? Shall we plead for more at the open fount which is pouring forth more than we accept? Are we really grateful for the good already received? Then we shall avail ourselves of the blessings we have and thus be fitted to receive more. Gratitude is much more than a verbal expression of thanks. Action expresses more gratitude than speech. If we are ungrateful for life, truth, and love, and yet return thanks to God for all blessings, we are insincere and incur the sharp censure our master pronounces on hypocrites. In such a case, the only acceptable prayer is to put the finger on the lips and remember our blessings. The progress of truth confirms its claims, and our master confirmed his words by his works. His healing power evoked denial, ingratitude, and betrayal arising from sensuality. Of the ten lepers whom Jesus healed, but one returned to give God thanks, that is, to acknowledge the divine principle which had healed him. Love for God and man is the true incentive in both healing and teaching. Love inspires, illumines, designates, and leads the way. All nature teaches God's love to man, but man cannot love God supremely and set his whole affections on spiritual things while loving the material or trusting in it more than in the spiritual. Not materially, but spiritually, we know him as divine mind, as life, truth, and love. We shall obey and adore in proportion as we apprehend the divine nature 
and love him understandingly, warring no more over the corporeality, but rejoicing in the affluence of our God. The everlasting I am is not bounded nor compressed within the narrow limits of physical humanity, nor can he be understood aright through mortal concepts. The precise form of God must be of small importance in comparison with the sublime question, what is infinite mind or divine love? Who is it that demands our obedience? He who in the language of scripture doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Divine mind rightly demands man's entire obedience, affection, and strength. No reservation is made for any lesser loyalty. Obedience to truth gives man power and strength. Submission to error superinduces loss of power. Truth casts out all evil and materialistic methods with the actual spiritual law, the law which gives sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, voice to the dumb, feet to the lame. If Christian science dishonors human belief, it honors spiritual understanding and the one mind only is entitled to honor. Mind is the grand creator, and there can be no power except that which is derived from mind. If mind was first chronologically, is first potentially, and must be first eternally, then give to mind the glory, honor, dominion, and power everlastingly do its holy name. Because the science of mind seems to bring into dishonor the ordinary scientific schools, which wrestle with material observations alone, the science has met with opposition. But if any system honors God, it ought to receive aid, not opposition, from all thinking persons. And Christian science does honor God as no other theory honors him. And it does this in the way of his appointing by doing many wonderful works through the divine name and nature. One must fulfill one's mission without timidity or dissimulation. For to be well done, the work must be done unselfishly. Whatever holds human thought in line with unself-love receives directly the divine power. Love fulfills the law of Christian science, and nothing short of this divine principle, understood and demonstrated, can ever furnish the vision of the apocalypse, open the seven seals of error with truth, or uncover the myriad illusions of sin, sickness, and death. Let us now have a moment of silent prayer for our world.
Let's now sing hymn number 31. Uh, the words of this hymn are by Mary Baker Eddy. Brood o'er us with thy sheltering wing, neath which our spirits blend, like brother birds that soar and sing, and on the same branch bend. The arrow that doth wound the dove darts not from those who watch and love. Hymn number 31.
Let's now sing hymn number 142. <clears throat> Immortal love, forever full, forever flowing free, forever shared, forever whole, and never ebbing sea. Hymn number 142.
I will read from the Christian Science textbook, The Scientific Statement of Being, and the correlative passages from 1 John, third chapter. There is no life, truth, intelligence, nor substance in matter. All is infinite mind and its infinite manifestation, for God is all in all. Spirit is immortal truth. Matter is mortal error. Spirit is the real and eternal. Matter is the unreal and temporal. Spirit is God, and man is his image and likeness. Therefore, man is not material. He is spiritual. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>